Hey guys, Cool Brick here with a pretty short tutorial um, giving a general explanation of how to use copper tape to make uh, your own custom 9 volt track um, in case you can't get your hands on some. Uh, first of all, this is just uh, pretty standard copper tape. Um, you can pick it up at um, pretty much most hardware stores, Ace, Home Depot, um, whatever is around you, Amazon, possibly convenience stores, that might be pushing your luck a little. Um, anyway, I just have a little piece of track here, one of these, uh, plastic ones, but, uh, you there are also those, uh, RC tracks that look like the 9 volt ones, but are just plastic. Um, and you can pretty much use the same technique, um, uh, on those tracks too. Um... I think it would actually probably work better than with these um, because uh, these also have these uh, little serrations which would probably make it a little bit tougher for the tape to grip it but um, I've used these uh, and they've worked alright for me but um, yeah I would, I would recommend using the actual plastic tracks um, to do this. Um, but what I was really going to talk about is, I mean, obviously I can pull some of this off and um, un take off the uh, the um, peel peel off the uh, backing for it, so that we can stick it to the track here. And so I'll just put this down right here, and then you just kind of press it down on the sides all nice and smooth. So you can see I've just put a small bit on here and um, it's a little bit more difficult on curves and um, you obviously do actually need the curved tracks for uh, for um, doing the uh, cur any anything with a curve because you don't really have the curves of this element here. And um, also it gets a little bit tricky when you want to uh, connect the end of one of these to uh, an actual piece of track. Um, you have to do a bit of finagling with stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's not the point. I'm gonna try not to get on too much of a tangent. Um, a question that was brought up in one of my videos is, for example, what if I had a piece like this and, um, and, and I actually had several pieces of plastic all lined up, do I have to put one giant piece of copper tape on it, or can I just put one piece down, like the one that's already there, and then just take another piece and just kind of do this? And the answer to that question is, if you do this, then you are going to have a very weak connection, if any at all, because under here, you just have the adhesive touching the top of this other copper tape. You don't actually have a copper on copper connection. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to do one giant piece of copper all the way through. Um, there's a way to bypass this. And the way to do that is a little bit tricky and you need to have um, good fingers to do it, but um, it's pretty simple actually, it's very, very simple. So what you do is you're gonna Let's say I have this uh, little break in here, so that's not a good connection, and I want to cover up this gap. I want these to actually be connected. What I can do is tear off a small piece of copper tape, and then another piece that's slightly longer than it. Usually it, it's best for it to be about um, an inch longer than the small piece. Um, and so what we can do is we're going to peel off the backing for the smaller piece first, if we can. There we go. And we're just going to put that, I'm just going to stick it right here for now, just to hold on to that so I can peel off this one as well. And if we can just get it off, here we go. Tough, tough little buggers, these strips really have to work at them to get the backing off. So there, now that I've got that off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick both sides. So 
I'm going to put adhesive on adhesive so that both of the sticky sides are touching each other. And I'm going to put this in about in the middle of the larger piece. So, um, facing the outward side, there is no stickiness facing the outwards part of either end. And what we're going to do concerning the uh, little gap that we have in here is we are going to cover the little gap with the piece of copper that's facing downwards. Now once we do this, we are creating a copper connection between both original pieces of copper tape and then you just have the extra bit on top to really just hold things down and it doesn't affect the rest of the um, conduct, uh, conducting power of the, of the other strips. So um, it does make it a tiny bit thicker, but if you press everything down well enough, and um, again, like I said, this will probably work better on the actual um, track pieces. Uh, if everything's sticky enough, my uh, the small amount of sweat from my fingers actually rubbed off the adhesive on this top piece a little. So you can see it's not quite sticking the way I wanted it to, but um, basically in ample conditions, this uh, method is a good solution if you don't want to have a huge amount of track and then lay out a really big strip because that can be a um, bit difficult to get it all um, just all aligned without making a lot of crinkles. As you can see, I didn't do a good job here. There are a bunch of crinkles, but um, it, it looks good if you actually do a good job. Even with all these little serrations, you can see you can actually get it quite flat in there, but again, I recommend you use the actual track pieces. They work quite a bit better than this, but um, I just want to use one of these to uh, demonstrate on a not very large, big thing. And I know I said this would be a short tutorial, but it kind of ended up being a little bit longer, probably because I had to spend two hours trying to get these darn um, backings off of the tape. So hopefully this was useful, and as always, thanks a whole lot for watching, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.